chromosomes as a whole. Okay? So if we think about a cell, the DNA replication means we take the 46 chromosomes up to 92. And in the process of mitosis, prophase, hemophase, anaphase, telophase, it takes it back to 42. Meiosis has to do that again so that the resulting gametes, do you guys remember that? Okay, now each have 23 chromosomes. Is everybody with me? So, in an ovary, the cells are going through this process. And as they go through this process, they eventually get to a point where they begin to look a little bit bigger with something looking like developing in the middle to a point where it's a nice big cell with a very well-defined egg which will have the 23 chromosomes. This area, the, this structure around that egg is my follicle. The structure around it? That that egg is developing mm -hmm. in. It is, it, that structure is termed a follicle. So, that FSH, in order for this to do that, I got to have some hormones like estrogens, progesterones, right? Do males have a follicle? Yes. So, when you look at the testes, once again, there will be cells that are present, okay, until they get, and, and in, in the tubules of the testes, okay, and because there are two, that means the middle portion is, is, is available for movement, okay, and in the scrotal sac, that is a a combination of a bunch of like what looks like a bunch of lines and everything because they're tubes. As the cells develop, they're going to go through the mitosis so that by the time they get to the middle of that tube, they are now the sperm with the flagellum. And the cells that are present in, in the scrotal sac are termed follicles for that development. And for that to occur, we need to make sure that stuff like testosterone gets released. All right? So the goal of FSH is to go to these target organs and help that production. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. LH wants a egg is fully formed and this is done one ovary this time next ovary next time but roughly we get an egg every 28 days all right when that egg is fully developed and it is now time for it to be released okay it literally gets spit out of its follicle, makes its way to the uterine tubes, the fallopian tubes, okay, to make its way to the uterus where hormones, progesterone, estrogens, all these other types of hormones are working on the lining so that it makes the lining amenable to supporting a fertilized egg. 
If it's not fertilized, that sloughs off, menstruation occurs. All right? But here's what's going to happen. When that egg is spit out and ovulation occurs, okay, that area ha has become opened, so to speak, and it's the corpus luteum. That helps secrete the progesterone, which is hopefully going to try to help get that lining ready for implantation so that the offspring can survive. Now, the reason I mention this, hypothalamus is the primitive region of the brain. It is located next to primitive regions of the brain whose goal is strictly keeping this species alive and propagating. Do you see a connection there? Isn't that cool? I bet y'all will never think about this the same again. Right? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Okay. The remaining four are going to target different tissues. T, S, H, thyroid stimulating hormone. Go to the thyroid gland. And I'm not very good at drawing. Y'all know that already, okay? Everybody know where the thyroid's located? Okay, because you go to the doctor and they kind of lean, you know, make you lean back and then they're up here pushing really hard, okay? And then they're like, swallow! How do you expect me to swallow? You're pressing on my throat. Y'all know what I mean, right? Okay, so my little thyroid gland Okay, TSH, what that tells me, it's going to tell the thyroid gland to make its product. So it will stimulate the cells of the thyroid gland, which will produce thyroid hormone. Okay, A-C-T-H, adrenocorticotrophic hormone, and we'll get to that one, but right now, targets the cortex of my adrenal gland. So if this is my adrenal gland, the middle portion is the medulla, the outer portion is the cortex. And we're going to get to that. PRL, prolactin, should only be active at the time of giving birth and feeding the young, the offspring. Because what it does is it acts on mammary glands so that we can lactate, produce the milk. Growth hormone, also known as somatotropin, it is the most produced hormone of that anterior pituitary. Thyroid is probably second, unless there's something wrong with thyroid gland. The effects are widespread on the body. This is showing us the representation between my hypothalamus to my anterior pituitary to their target organ. The chemicals will get released 
circulate in the bloodstream until they reach their target, which is extremely important to remember. They will reach their target organ where the cells will have receptors. From that point, it now will affect what happens in the cell. The posterior pituitary just has the two. ADH oxytocin. Yes, it can store them. Why? Because when the body needs them, we don't have time to wait for it to be made. So it acts quickly, similar to what happens with the nervous system and a neurotransmitter, but it's a hormone. So the antidiuretic wants the body to retain the water. We haven't gotten to this, but that plays a part in the cardiovascular system. All right, it's going to play a part on our heart and vessels. So the antidiuretic hormone, another name for it is vasopressin. Does anybody recognize that? Mm -hmm. People who are already working in the field? It's for like, um, it's like for public blood pressure. Yes. Well, the vasopressin causes vasoconstriction. No, they constrict and hold in. Retain water, which will hopefully help blood pressure issues. So why do you put them on the in the but they'll have yeah there and and see I've often questioned that um, because I know I I know people who they might be on three different types of blood pressure medicine. And I'm going, and you know me, I'll go, I'll look stuff up, and I'll be like, hold up. This one does that, which affects that. So you got that affecting that, which will affect this, and then this one, which will do this, which will, and I'm going, but you know, a lot of them, a lot of them be like, I've been on this for 30 years, I'm not gonna stop taking it. And they're like, well, you know, this new one does that answer more. Like, That's you know, my mom. Yeah, like, my mom, good. they have her like three blood pressure medicines. I'm like, mom, how do you even stand up? I mean, I'm like, seriously. Well, it's been like this for how is she 50 years, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, when, when doctors like new doctors try to change those people medicine and yeah. so long, it really messes up. Like It'll mess them up. Yeah. Yeah. Really messes them up. So if they've been on them for that long, they usually tend to keep them on there. But what we're going to see under normal conditions, ADH that is stored in the um, posterior pituitary. What it's helping us do, now remember, this is under normal conditions, not if 
somebody has some type of cardiovascular issues, 